Thank you all for coming back to watch and listen to the re-recording of Paul Mansell's Tuesday, the 27th of February 2018 webinar that was entitled Stakeholder Engagement, the Art and Science of Winning the SE Snakes and Ladders Game. Though Paul will be presenting it slightly differently today, it still has the same powerful and compelling messages. Being a re-recording with no live audience, there will naturally be no Q&A at the end of the presentation. We are extremely grateful to you, Paul, for finding a slot in your very busy diary to represent for us after the live webinar recording was damaged by a technical audio issue unknown to us until we listen back afterwards. Indeed, we're also apologetic both to Paul and yourselves that the need has arisen at all. Before I hand over to Paul, let me briefly introduce myself and the Stakeholder Engagement Focus Group, commonly known as the SEFG. My name is Russell Jameson, and I'm a member of the SEFG. I've been involved with project management since the mid-1980s with corporates such as Barclays, JP Morgan, and BT. A member of APM since 1999 and been volunteering with them since 2001 in a wide variety of roles. Already a fellow and RPP, I have recently submitted to become a chartered project professional. Though, even if granted, I'm not sure that would live up to being referred to as the godfather of project management and APM during Paul's initial presentation. Maybe that was the curse that caused the damage to the recording. The Stakeholder Engagement Focus Group has a purpose to encourage practitioners across the project management landscape to make stakeholder engagement a higher priority. Our group currently comprises of some eight people who share a passion for the topic, though we would dearly love to be joined by others. Our web pages are most easily found by typing stakeholder engagement into a search engine such as Google. For the period of May 2017, there were 5,462 visits with an 82.26% bounce rate, meaning folks did not continue onto other related pages. For the same period in 2018, the visits count had jumped to 12,271, with the bounce rate dropping to 75.65% showing a significant improvement in views on the related pages. We held a workshop in May addressing the look, feel and content of the web pages after a previous session with interested folks had provided excellent user experience feedback for us. Proposed changes have now been shared with the APM and discussions continue. Finally, let me draw your attention to two upcoming stakeholder engagement related webinars. The first one is on Thursday the 28th of June from 12.30. What is stakeholder engagement and why is it important? This will be presented by Benedict Pinches and is based upon a white paper he has written. The second one is on Tuesday the 17th of July, again at 12.30. And this one titled Dealing with Difficult Stakeholders and being presented by Dr. Christine Unterhitzenberger and is based upon some research that she undertook with others that APM published earlier this year. You can book on to both of these at www.apm.org.uk forward slash event. Okay, on to the main reason you've come back to this link, and that is to hear what Paul must share with us again. Paul, thank you for your patience, and over to you. Russell, thanks very much for that introduction. You're slightly embarrassed by being referred by me as the godfather of project management. But just to further that slightly uncomfortable position for you, I would say that you are a champion of knowledge sharing. And that is why I give my time up to support you and the team with a stakeholder engagement. As you said, we previously had a webinar. Technically, we didn't get a clean recording. Therefore, this one is a repeat of that session but split into four podcasts this would make it more digestible and hopefully allow busy people to be able to drop in for the podcast that most interests them so there's a lot to stakeholder engagement and the reason why we're talking about it today is to share what i've termed as the snakes and ladders of stakeholder engagement based on my experience of sadly almost 30 years i'm long in the tooth and my motto would be always learning. 
and that is indeed what these podcasts are all about. My background, prior to leaving the Royal Marines, I had not gone to university. I'd spent a lot of time in project environment, but without the technical vocabulary to really define what that work was all about. I then went to Deloitte Consulting, and that gave it some structure and shape. And today we're in an environment where APM has the body of knowledge, and there's so much more thirst and understanding for knowledge in this area. Today, I'm gonna to share some technical solutions, uh, but also I'll talk about the art and science of this particular area. From Deloitte Consulting, I jointly set up Morehouse Consulting, uh, which BT bought uh, in 2008. I then became Cisco's lead author for their program management code of practice, which I rolled out globally. Uh, since then, I've been an IPA team leader, spending 18 months on High Speed 2, uh, six months as the strategic advisor on Grenfell, and indeed I shall draw from Grenfell to talk about some case study experience to put some meat on the flesh of the bones of this exciting subject. So podcast one is setting the stakeholder scene. And this is one of four podcasts. Uh, the second one will be the case tool, which is giving a technical framework that might be helpful for those currently engaged in projects. The third one is to set that tool into some various case studies. And the fourth one is to look back on it, the Reflections podcast. So without further ado, let's dive into the next one. We started the webinar uh, with a, a poll question and we asked five specific questions under the title of what is the most common snake in your experience of stakeholder engagement? And everyone chose a single option. Without spending too much time on this, on the first time we ran this poll question, and we repeated it at the end of the webinar, for the first time, there were 70% of responses that chose one, two, or three. What you will find and happened on the day of the webinar is that that shifted to 70 to 80% choosing number four and five. And what we'll do through the next couple of podcasts is explain why that was the case. So it wouldn't be right without getting some primary definitions in place. And while this is not a podcast on the 101 of stakeholder engagement, let's just start with the basics, picking the great Bible of the APM box sixth edition. There's a diagram in the bottom left-hand corner that shows that stakeholder engagement and stakeholder management are two sides of the same coin. The definition helps focus on where that differential is. As an example, stakeholder engagement is around outcomes, it's around relationship building. I explained earlier where my background was in terms of Deloitte Consulting and Morehouse Consulting, helping Cisco and as an IPA advisor. And through that experience, I've suffered a lot of project failures. I don't believe it's all down to myself, but there is a reality that many of our projects do fail. And I often look back and say, well, why did that happen? And some of the examples I've been involved in, Fire Control, Metronet, and the National Programme for IT, end up being very expensive failures, not only in terms of the quantitative amount of money, 500 million pounds for the fire control, potentially, four to seven billion pounds for the National Programme for IT, but it's also, you have to think about the opportunity cost of where that money could have been spent on hospitals, on schools, social care programmes. So it's our community that need to improve the success rate. Now, this introductory podcast sets theory almost like a foundation from which we can discuss the subject. And I've picked four separate areas, what I'm calling the snakes and ladders board. So the top left-hand corner, we can't really go wrong than look at the National Audit Office and the Cabinet Office reasons for project failure. And the third reason for project failure is the lack of effective engagement with stakeholders. And I've done 
many studies drawing from some of the giants of the academic community, such as Professor Peter Morris. And their studies show that stakeholder engagement is one of the primary causes for project failure, or flip that round, one of the main reasons for success is because that's done well. Top right hand corner of this diagram shows that there's a spectrum. On the left hand side, I characterize it in this conceptual diagram of simple projects being linear, stable, and quite focused around a stepping stone approach. On the right, as you go towards the greater complexity of programs, you'll see that it's nonlinear. Stakeholder engagement becomes even more important. Many of the stakeholders who we don't know when we start or perhaps even to the end, and there are unpredictable consequences of any action. So that is the nature of the world that, that we live in. Bottom left hand corner talks about the social complexity dimension versus the technical complexity. And when they are at their highest, you'll see they're called wicked messes, which is um, David Hancock's phrase that he uses in one of his excellent books. The bottom right hand corner is a subject very close to my heart, which is too often in the project management world, we focus around the enablers of success. Have we got risk management right in place? Is our planning as good as it could be? But what we need to do is understand what success is, both from our own business case and sponsors focus and understanding, but also from stakeholders perceived understanding of success. And when I come on to stick, case studies in the third podcast that will become clearer the rules tongue in cheek i say rule number one is there are no rules and and that is true there's no doctrine that you can apply that will suddenly give us successful results in projects it's about adapting for the particular situation we're in now in the next podcast i'm going to cover one of the tools that we can use this was developed by Donning McNichol, Guy Giffen, and myself, we wrote a white paper for RICS, and APM was a corporate partner in this research work. There were 10 principles. It's not about rules one to 10, it's principles and adaption. And I'll take you through where the lessons that we've learned have been drawn together in this particular publication, which the APM have on their website, and you can see there's a link to it. So thanks for listening to this first podcast, and I hope you can join us for podcast number two shortly.